Oh, hi, Nisha. <laughs> yes, it worked. <laughs> Talking about zombies, and once again, we're sponsored by the makers of the Grey Cells graphic novel, who had no input on the content you're about to see. Boobs. Somewhat fittingly for a show filled with rotting, decayed corpses, The Walking Dead is a shambolic, bloated mess just waiting for the sweet, merciful sting of a golf club shaft being driven through its skull. While the show isn't exactly a rating smash anymore, it does have some phenomenal looking zombies in it. Zombies that apparently smell all kinds of amazing. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> is your hair okay? It looks so bad. What do you mean it looks bad? It looks like his. So look. Oh, that looks great, yeah! <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Put the bottle out of the way. So Nisha, what do you know about some zombies? I don't know much about The Walking Dead zombies, because I don't really watch it. No, that's fair enough. You must have watched like, the, like, a couple episodes in the first season. I think everybody did. It was a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, I watched a few episodes of the first season. Um, I watched... When Negan appeared as well. See, I think he's a great character. I watched yeah. a few episodes with him in. I love him in Tekken 7. In what? He's in Tekken 7. Is he actually? Yeah, he's a he's one of the guest fighters in Tekken 7. I've never oh. seen like a reveal that would be more suited for Mortal Kombat. Because when it came out, it's like, why is he not in Mortal Kombat? The one thing he's known for is caving people, sculling with a baseball bat. Why is he not in Mortal Kombat? I love in, um, there's a reference in Supernatural as well, because is it, yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan yes. played uh, the brother's dad and then got killed off. And then um, there's an episode in Supernatural where um, Dean finds the Lucille. <laughs> the baseball and he just, he just finds it and said, Dad used to love this thing. <laughs> back to back to back, that was one for the books. Yeah, man, Dad loved this thing. I love shit like that. And I'm a big old fan of The Walking Dead because I love me some zombies. And admittedly, I know the show, it's, it's not that good anymore. And I, I think it isn't a spoiler anymore that Rick's not in it because the actor, Andrew Lincoln, was like, fuck being in these anymore. But he's still contracted to appear in like three Walking Dead movies. Oh, is he? Yeah. So his character doesn't die. He, he literally just a helicopter comes and takes him away. On the way, by the beat the juice of town. But I do like zombie fiction and zombie media. It's always something I've been interested in. I love like all the George Romero films and like just seeing like an expansion of that and like seeing like you know an original-ish take on it. Because one thing I like about the Walking Dead universe is that in their universe, um, zombie media does not exist, which is why nobody uses the term zombies. What are they known as in? Like walkers, muertos, um, just rotters, shamblers. Like everyone has their own word for it. Well, it is a show about zombies, so obviously zombies are going to be the key part. Yeah, I mean, the, the cast has remained relatively consistent, by which I mean Daryl's always in it, because he's like, you know, the fucking OC they inserted who can't die because he's too fucking OP and ripped. But like, everyone else in the show, because it's a zombie show, you know, is at risk of dying at any moment. So like, the zombies are the real star. And even from like the very first episodes, they knew that, and some of those zombies look fucking incredible. Like the little girl zombie in the first episode, you know, like the jaw missing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like they have like one zombie like that per season that's like a hero zombie that's like fucking yes this is what we're going to put on the poster this is what we put in the trailers because that zombie looks so goddamn good little girl and throughout the um, uh, seasons of Walking Dead they have gotten like more and more confident and skilled at applying zombie makeup and they will have um, like every other episode, just a zombie that looks like it lost a fight with an upturned lawnmower. <laughs> I think uh, there was a scene that really grossed me out, it was when Negan killed Glenn. Okay, that's not a spoiler, that's like two years, three yeah, years so old Yeah, so I know spoilers, but it's been out for a, a long time now, but yeah. yeah, when he killed Glenn and his eye was like popping out, yeah, and so I was like, oh my god, I know it's not real, but it's just... <laughs> well, part of the reason for that is because the guy who supervised all the special effects on The Walking Dead, Greg Nicotero, worked under special effects master Tom Savini, who cut his teeth working alongside George Romero. And I argue that like his work includes some of the best looking zombies ever. Because he worked on Land of the Dead, which is where you get the very iconic shot of the jawless zombie walking down the street with no arms. And that is like one of the best looking zombies ever in any piece of it like walking dead like no you're like you can't top that that's too good yeah. 
He has no jaw. How does that work? Do you have any favourite zombies from fiction? Or any, any standout examples of like a good looking zombie or some good zombie acting? So I have a couple. I mean, the, the only zombie movie really that I enjoyed the most was Shaun of the Dead because that was comedy. And they do have some good zombies in that though. I mean, maybe not the zombies um, per se, but the uh, effects in that are really good. When they rip that guy apart, yeah. that, isn't he? When they, like, they pull him out the window and then just start ripping his inside. And his that, scream just... is just blood curdling. So... So what the fuck is that? For me, I think uh, my favourite zombie actor, not zombie look, but uh, at the end of the original Dawn of the Dead, there's just a guy uh, who turns into a zombie and he's like walking with like a gun on one finger with his ankle all the way rolled over. And I don't know how the actor did it, but I contend it's like, it's the best zombie acting I have ever seen. Because he's like, Ugh! and it's incredible. And if he had better makeup on, that'd be like the best zombie ever. amazing. There's a lot, a lot of acting does go into being dead basically. <laughs> yeah and The Walking Dead does do that because they put every zombie actor through what they call zombie school. Oh okay so what does zombie school include? Uh, it includes a crash course on how to just be a zombie essentially like how to walk like a zombie, how to talk like a zombie which I mean you don't fucking talk. Zombies in that universe do not talk. One of the things I noticed that I was doing a rewatch of like, you know, by, by, by rewatch I mean just like, you know, just having episodes on in the background. It's like, in the first season, they play fast and loose with what zombies can do. Because zombies in that first season use tools. Oh, do they? Yeah, there's oh. a zombie in the first season who breaks a window with a rock. Yeah, and I noticed that because I fucking love zombies. And I'm like, zombies don't do that. Zombies can't use tools. So yeah, I'm guessing there is a lot of work that goes into making these zombies. Yeah, and one of the things that you may not notice um, uh, on an initial watch of the show is that the zombies actually help you tell the passage of time. And they actually let you know the area that you are in. Because the zombie makeup is reflective of the chronological time period since the infection began and where in the world the survivors are when they encounter those zombies. For example, zombies in urbanised areas are less decayed than ones in rural areas. Um, as a subtle allusion to the fact that the ones in rural areas are more exposed to the elements and insects and things like that. So you'll notice that when they're in like the woods and shit, the zombies there are far more decayed. And they have less muscle tissue because animals and insects and stuff have been getting out of the elements. The ones in cities are just a little bit better and they're like their clothes are a bit more presentable because they've been largely protected from those things just by the urbanisation of the world they live in. Makes sense. Or don't live in, I suppose. Yeah, makes sense. Like, little details like that really make it more believable, I they, guess. They do, yeah, they add to the very similitude of the world. One of my favourite words in regard to media, it means building a believable world that makes sense. And um, one of the things I like about like, Greg Nicotero, it's like he, he studied under the guy who worked with the guy who invented the genre, so he fucking knows. And throughout The Walking Dead, every season, the zombies get more and more decayed to showcase the fact that the passage of time is like, you know, ravaging the zombies. Like, there's, and eventually there's going to be nothing left of the zombies. And, when you get to like season eight and nine and ten, there's like zombies where there's nothing fucking left. They're just like skeletons. The only thing is like I look down and it goes, uh, uh, there we go. Nisha, there's uh, something we need to talk about and it is zombie hair. And something that Greg Nicotero does not like about zombie fiction, as much as he enjoys it and you know, respects the work of people like Tom Savini, is that all zombie hair looks amazing. By which I mean it looks like it belongs to an actor who uh, got a haircut that morning. And even if you go back to like Dawn of the Dead and that amazing zombie actor I talked about, or like no Tom Savini's like you know his fucking greatest work Land of the Dead. The zombies in that they've still got pretty decent looking hair, and that's because like you know it's the actor's own hair. Like you're already slapping a bunch of makeup on the face, you're not going to ruin their hair, are you? It's like the same with the um, actors with the teeth already clean yeah. and white thing. Well, if you were uh, living in a world where there's zombies and apocalypse and stuff like that, you, your teeth would not be perfect. Yeah, or like when you look at like season two Laurie, where like your armpits are shaved. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> like, Rick can't get a razor for his beard. Like, they even have a moment in one of the seasons where, like, Michonne brings Rick a razor. It's like, this is the first one I've fucking found. Shave that shit off your face. But then every woman has shaved armpits. Greg Nicotero did not like that zombie hair. Generally looks quite good. So, um, he decided, I'm going to make all the zombie hair in my zombie shit look terrible. And do you want to guess at how you make hair look terrible, Nisha? <laughs> Buy wigs off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on eBay. Oh, eBay. eBay. Okay. eBay. <laughs> Buying wigs off eBay? <laughs> no, um, it's actually quite counterintuitive and it's you slather everyone's hair in hair conditioner. Oh, okay. Because when you put hair conditioner on and before you wash it out, your hair looks very greasy, very lank. Yeah. That's what he does. So every zombie you see on the show just has their entire head 
coated in just gallons and gallons of hair conditioner so their hair looks suitably lank, lifeless, and just greasy. And um, according to Nicotero, like, a side effect of doing this is that zombie hordes just smell really good. Because like, when you see a zombie horde go past, you'll be like, they don't look very good, but they smell amazing. Because they all just smell like really nice, expensive conditioner, because that's what they lather them all in. That's amazing. Good for the hair as well. <laughs> yeah, like, all the, like, that's the thing as well. Oh, I'm a zombie. <laughs> just because I'm worth it. Because I'm worth it. <laughs> So nearby Nisha, for anybody who missed Monday's episode and is currently wondering, you know, the hell's going on here? Do you want to explain why we're currently looking like this? <laughs> we? <laughs> Just you. <laughs> we are, like, they don't know what you're dressed like. Fuck it. Nisha's in a Halloween costume too, just pretend. Um, well, you uh, got a sponsorship from... Yes! Um, I forgot the name. Grey Cell. It's alright, Nisha, I want to read it out again. I'll read it out again. Like, eventually you'll, me. you'll remember. So I'll remind you, today's sponsor, who had uh, no input on the content, but they're you no know, bunch of nice guys, is Grey Cells, a graphic novel. Um, the first chapter which you can read at the links below, and they're trying to get it to be a full-fledged piece of art that you can go buy and then have on your shelf. And I'm not actually showing you on the art yet. I've got like, Nisha, no. do you want to see some fucking art? This yes, thing please. looks sick. So I just said, you send me some artwork, it looks rad as fuck. And it's like, yeah! Oh wow. It was fucking sick. Oh, that's like, so good. Like the frog man. Like, yeah! I want as a poster. That is really cool. So I'm hoping that um, uh, by doing this sponsor, they're gonna send like a big old print for the, the, the office wall. And I've not mentioned that to them, but I'm hoping that they get enough people clicking on the Kickstarter link below to get this thing made, that they'll send me one as a thank you. Yeah, and they're the reason you're dressed like this, because you you paid for the, the outfit. Yeah, they sent some money to sponsor one video and I said, I'll let you sponsor three because analytics has not been great recently. And I went out and I bought myself some skelly bobs. I bought some balloons. I bought a beer. I bought a, a bigger skelly bob. I bought some balloons for here. I bought this outfit, this Tommy Wiseau outfit. I feel really great. <laughs> oh, <sighs> God. I love when we get sponsored videos though because there's just, there's an element to them where it's like, I can't believe I'm being paid to do this. <laughs> Because I'm being paid twice because YouTube pays me and they pay me. And it just feels like, how is this a job that I'm able to do? How am I sat here earning more money than I've ever done in my life before? And yeah, we can talk about the money because um, something we do on Fact Theme, whenever we get sponsored, you know, as infrequent as it happens, is that all money we get from sponsorships is split four ways. Um, equally, it goes to the channel's coffers, not myself, because I draw a wage from the channel's coffers, Nisha, Brad and Lucas. And um, this week's sponsorship was totaling a thousand pounds. So Nisha, you get 250 quid. Oh, that's amazing. You get 250 quid for just sitting here watching me drink a beer, just like Tommy was so and talking about zombies. That's amazing. Great, isn't it? That's so good. That's why I like the way we do sponsorship, because like, you know, everybody gets a piece. Everybody get. I feel like everybody walks away from our sponsorships happy. I hope at least anyway, because the uh, sponsors have still got to sign off on these. Because we can pull back the curtain on that a little bit when we do sponsorships. Um, I say, I'll record the video first. And then if you like it, then you can sign off on it and send me the money. If you don't like it, we'll edit around it. And I don't know if we'll be able to edit around this one, so I really hope they say yes. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I hope they like it. It's funny. There's links below. <laughs>